I'll first start with a little background about the canoe and how I ended up with it. If you are a bird and nature nerd like me, you probably already know the authors Donald and Lillian Stokes. Over the past 35 plus years, they've authored many books together on birds and nature. Here are some of the ones that I own that I'll often use in the bird walks and talks that I do. I've known them for some years now from my days working at the Audubon Society of Rhode Island. Recently, we got together at their home, and as we were taking a nice walk around their beautiful property, I noticed this aluminum canoe kind of sitting in the brush, and I asked about it, and they offered it to me. And this was Don's canoe from when he was a young man. Naturally, I'd be honored to have the canoe of such a distinguished naturalist. The deal was simple. They knew I started a nest box project last year, so they asked that I provide and install an American Kestrel nest box for them, and that I also help them do a quick job on the dock by the lake, a deal I couldn't refuse. I took another trip to grab the canoe, and now my project begins. I'm going to start by building a basic canoe stand with some free wood that I just acquired, so that part won't cost me anything either. Quick, easy, and basic. It will serve the purpose. The canoe is actually in pretty remarkable shape for 60 years old or possibly even older. Just needs a good cleaning. It's got a little bit of oxidation and dirt built up on the hull. But we're gonna see what we can do about that. Magic eraser is proven to be very useful here. You can see where I stopped. It's a pretty big difference. So, a lot of elbow grease, but I'll get through the whole thing. This product here is what I used at the end to try to get the last of the grime out, and it worked pretty well. Um, there was a difference, and what I recommend doing is not spraying it onto the canoe itself, um, because when it runs down, it can leave streaks, and then it's hard to kind of get everything even looking but if you spray it onto a sponge and then evenly wipe it across the canoe um, you don't have all the drips and it works a little bit better that way definitely wear gloves um, it's very acidic and you might want to consider wearing a mask too because the vapor can kind of make you cough a little bit she cleaned up real nicely a um, little shiny in the picture because it's wet but it's very clean and now we are on to a couple of basic additions and modifications. One of my attempts to soundproof this is to cover up the thwarts with this pipe insulation. I got it at Home Depot and it's the largest one they have. It doesn't wrap all the way around it and don't get the one that has the adhesive where you can join them together because that's a pain to deal with. Put this in place, it takes the shape of it pretty well and uh, you know, hopefully I can lay my fishing rods across this and don't have to worry about all kinds of scratchy sounds. I bought inch and a half wide electrical tape to just seal this around and hold it all in place. I don't have to worry about it flying off when it's on the roof of the car. And I think it'll kind of make it last a little longer too. This is the widest electrical tape I can find. I also wanted to cover these top edges. It's so easy to, to hit that part and make a lot of noise with your rods and with your paddle. So this is a smaller size insulation than what I have around the thwarts. And I cut out sections for where these um, seats and thwarts meet the edge. What's really nice about this, um, this has a lip on each side here. So this really grabs it well. I'm almost certain this is not going to be an issue with wind. I think this is going to stay in place. It's on pretty securely with this. To finish off trying to soundproof it more anyway, I found this rubber mat on Amazon. It was a roll um, that I was able to cut it into three pieces and put it along the bottom. It's nice that it has this gray diamond plate finish. It really matches the canoe nicely. But more importantly, it works. I've been out a couple of times with it now, and it's definitely nice and quiet, and it sits in place nicely. And I highly recommend it. I think the roll was $36, a bit of an investment, but still much cheaper than some of the other 
options I was looking at. I'll talk to you a little bit about this console that I made. Really happy how it came out. We'll start with the front of it. I found these at West Marine that were designed to be mounted with suction cups, so I popped those out and then used those existing holes to mount to the side of the box. A lot of handy little features where you could hang lures from you know, some of those holes. I had clippers, my toenail clippers hanging in that hole. Um, nice quick access because I'm always losing them and I use those a lot for fishing, clipping line and stuff. Um, you know, needle nose pliers or whatever can go in there. Certainly will hold a battery pack charger with your phone charging together. It's nice to have that right in front of you while it's charging. I found this little utility light I was super happy to find, less than $4. And in that size, I thought I would have to use stickers or Velcro or whatever, but it actually came with existing holes that you could slip over a screw head. It's very bright and lights up the whole area right in front of me. Um, moving to the top here, I got these bungee straps, which can be handy. Yesterday, I had my camera on top of this in a dry bag, my big camera, when I was doing some bird photography. And it sat up there fine. And when I wasn't having the camera in the bag, I just put the loose bag here and snapped it under there so I didn't have to worry about it blowing away. But you could use that for, you know, your lunch bag or snack bag or whatever. I found this Scotty mount um, base here. Um, really love the quick disconnect and it locks in place. The one that I have on my kayak doesn't lock in place. If you pull hard enough, it just comes right out. And I have my GoPro mounted on there. I did a lot of video with that yesterday. It worked out well. And of course you could put a fish finder on there as well. And looking at the side here, we have this little spring loaded clip that holds the lid down. Not that it's usually an issue to hold it down, but it could be. I put these eyelets on each side and the bungee cord wraps around a sort of factory, sort of, I don't know what you call it. There's like this little base on the bottom of the canoe here. And it was happened to be in a great spot. So I wrap it around that and hook it on each side. And with this flooring, with this mat, it just sits in place. It doesn't slide around at all. And you can see the footing I have on the bottom as well. So you don't have the box sitting in water at all. On the back side, I did these uh, larger bungee straps. And these could be great, I was thinking, for maybe bagged rain gear or a light jacket to put behind there. It's out of the way. It's off the floor. And, um, yeah, just handy. Handy to have. I'll take a look inside. I'll clip it. So what I ended up doing was making a divider in here. And, you know, it's just nice to have. Uh, that's This will just slide right out. Uh, that little bracket there is just not attached to the wood here, so it just slides out. Good to keep a few things separate, sunscreen and repellent and a big water bottle, no problem at all. Yesterday I had another camera with me, this P900. Um, you know, I had some snacks in here, and this was actually my whole GoPro gadgets, which I really didn't need to have. Um, so I, you know, would have had more space to, there if I needed it. And uh, so it just really works out well, and I love having this spacious tray on top. And, you know, using it twice now, it's just, I, you know, I had an 18-foot canoe years ago, and I really wish I would have would have built one for that. Love it. Highly recommend it. A few thoughts after using the canoe a couple of times, the way it's rigged out now. Considering a few other things I might do here. And I'll start with the anchor. So I simply use a little metal s beaner clip here and, and um, you know, put it through the different loops, whatever length I want the anchor. And it works out fine because the... Um, foam padding it doesn't make any noise when you throw the anchor over the metal clip isn't clanking around and and it's nice that the uh, foam padding also doesn't make any sound when you put the anchor down on that but you are limited a little bit if you want to try to position yourself in a cove to take a few casts you really need to think about wind direction and you know sometimes you drop anchor and you end up spinning around in a direction that just isn't convenient so an anchor trolley system like my kayak has is something I'm considering where I can kind of run the anchor up to one end or the other. Not sure about that yet, um, but it's something I'm thinking about anyway. First time out, I thought that this box here with the weight in it and, the, and using the seat that's a little bit more forward like this, going the other direction, would be fine. And it pretty much was, but I also found that the wind would blow around the nose of the canoe a little bit more than I'd like. So this is something I used to do with my 18 foot canoe all the time. I simply use a bucket, which when it's not in the canoe, I'm throwing my anchor and other gear in it. But I fill it up with water and drop it in there. And yesterday when I used it, I was just doing uh, wildlife photography and whatnot. 
it really worked out well and definitely it did not um, get taken by the wind quite as easily. The other thing I'm thinking about doing is adding a bracket back here in a trolling motor. I'm eyeballing a 46 pound thrust, I think. And I was looking at some of the brackets online and looks like something I could build easily enough. So I'll probably just build a bracket, get a good 12 volt battery and see what happens. I think a 46 pound thrust will move this thing along really well. And uh, on medium power, I'll probably get a good five hours out of it anyway. So those are my thoughts there. And, um, but so far so good. The maiden voyage was just perfect. Took it out for a little fishing. I heard a barred owl calling while I was out on the pond and it was pretty spectacular. Hearing that barred owl just motivated me to want to get out for a day of wildlife photography. These are just some of the shots from an incredible day on the water. All I could think about was all the wildlife Don must have seen over the years from this very canoe I was in. It gave the moment special meaning to me and I'll never forget that day. I appreciate you taking the time to watch my video today and uh, hopefully you will check out some of the other stuff that will be coming up or check out some of my past videos. I recently have done landscaping for wildlife, focusing on water. There will be other parts to that. And there was a fun video on a swarm of tree swallows that I was in the middle of, perhaps 20,000 of them, and managed to get some fun footage for that. Um, but anyhow, thanks for, again, taking the time, and follow if you like. Take care.